The other day I posted a video about tire sizes, and I mentioned that the tires on that Suburban were not the correct size, but we didn't really dive into what the difference that makes is. So today, we're going to talk about it. Hi, I'm Kyle with DIY Auto Homeschool, and today we're going to be talking about tire sizes again, and more specifically, what it could cost you. So, the tire we were looking at on that Suburban the other day, uh, were, they were a 265-75 R16, and what that vehicle calls for is a 265-70-16. Now, basically that just equates to a tire that's a little bit taller. And I mentioned in that video that we can take those measurements, the numbers they give us, and come up really, really close to the exact height of that tire, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. So, on the tire that that vehicle is supposed to have on it, it would have a sidewall height of 185.5 millimeters, and that translates to 7.303 inches. Now, you multiply that by two because you have a sidewall up here and a sidewall down here, and you have 14.606 inches of sidewall to add to your 16 inches of rim brings us to a diameter of 30.606 inches top to bottom of this tire. To run the same numbers on the tire that it actually has on it is 198.75 millimeters translated to inches it comes out to be a total with both sidewalls of 15.65 inches. Add that to the 16 inch wheel and you have 31.65 inches. So, we can see right off the bat, we have a tire that's about an inch taller uh, on there than what is supposed to be. So, let's break it down and figure out how much that's going to throw us off. And when I say throw us off, I mean it's going to cause the speedometer to be inaccurate. Because the vehicle does not know how far it's actually traveling per revolution of the tire. So the circumference of this tire, which is the one it's supposed to have on it, uh, is equal to 30.606 times pi, and the circumference of this obviously is 31.65 times pi. That brings us to a circumference of this tire being 96.151 inches, or 8.01 feet, and this one being 99.431 inches, or 8.29 feet. That's the distance that these wheels will travel in one full revolution sitting on the ground. So, the way I figured this up is I divided this into one mile, which is 5,280 feet. So, this tire would have to, would have to turn 659.18 times to travel one mile. And this tire would have to travel, or sorry, would have to revolve 636.91 times to travel one mile. So, breaking this down, if you were to travel this many revolutions in one minute, that would be 659.18 revolutions per minute. And since you're traveling a mile in the, that many revolutions, that is one mile per minute that's 60 miles an hour. So when your wheel is spinning, when the vehicle and the computer uh, sees the vehicle speed sensor and determines that the wheel is spinning at 659.18 uh, revolutions per minute, it knows that the vehicle is traveling 60 miles an hour if it has the correct tire size on it. So what I did here is, since it has this tire on it, and not this tire on it, we say that when it's traveling this many RPMs, we're actually traveling the distance of this tire, not of this tire. So if you were to travel this 8.29 feet, sorry, not square feet, 8.29 feet uh, per every revolution of the 659.18 revolutions, that would mean you traveled 5,464.6 feet, or 1.04 miles. So, with this tire on it, instead of the tire that you're supposed to have, 
you come out traveling 0 0.04 miles more per minute than you intended, than the computer thinks you're traveling. If you multiply that out times 60, 1.04 miles per minute equals 62 miles an hour. That means that when your computer thinks you are traveling 60 miles an hour, because this is what it's seeing, you are actually traveling this distance of 62 miles an hour. That's how it throws your speedometer off, is because the computer, well, some newer cars will have a GPS, but like on the way they figure the speedometers, the, they look at the, how many times the tire is turning, and they figure, okay, well, I know this vehicle has this tire size, and we're gonna be going this far per every revolution, and they figure up the vehicle's on that. Well, when you have the wrong size tires on there, your speedometer is incorrect. Now, this is the math side of it. This is, you know, a drawing on a whiteboard. And I know there's some people who say, well, you know, that's, you know, that's theory and that's, you know, numbers on a board. That's not actual practical, sorry, practical application. So, we'll just have to test it. Cruise control set right at exactly 60 miles an hour. And we are actually traveling 62 miles an hour. So, there you have it. Yikes. Well, I guess all this math and numbers actually does work out. So, what does that mean? Well, it can mean nothing or it can mean a lot. If you don't really care that your speedometer is super accurate and you keep it in mind and you stay, you know, a little under just to be safe, probably never have a problem. If you drive right at the speed limit, you run the very, very slight risk of maybe getting a speeding ticket someday. If you have a habit of speeding, which a lot of people do, I'm not saying that's bad, I mean it happens, it is what it is, you're going two miles an hour faster than you thought you were at 60. It means what it means. But most police officers probably won't write you a ticket for two miles an hour over, but they can and they'd be well within their rights to do it and you'd have to pay the ticket. And in some areas that ticket can be, you know, between two and three hundred dollars just for two miles an hour over. Seems like a lot of hassle for just having the wrong tires on your vehicle. So yeah, I do recommend having the correct tire size on your vehicle as well as not speeding in the first place. But either way, at least you have the information now. You can make the decision. You can say, well, I know for a fact. I've seen it, you know, in theory. I've seen it in operation. When I have bigger tires than I'm supposed to, my speedometer's off. It's more knowledge for you, it's more information for you. So you can have it or you can share it with other people. Either way, I hope you've learned something from this video. Uh, if you have, feel free, give us a like, a thumbs up, check out our channel, check out some of the other videos we got on here. Uh, in fact, I'll make it easy, let me, right, right here. I'll put one right here and I'll put another one right here. And I will see you guys in the next video.